everyone and welcome. In today's video I'm going to share with you which manufacturers of bicycles have creaky bottom brackets. Those of you that are regular viewers to the channel will know that I make bottom brackets. As part of the process for developing those bottom brackets I have to know what sizes, fits and tolerances that bike manufacturers use. So what I did was I took a load of bike frames and simply measured them. I'm now going to share that data with you so you can make your own mind up as to what to buy and what not to buy. There are two basic issues that cause creak. One is the fit of the bearing into the bearing shell or in the case of a push fit standard the sleeve into the bearing shell. The other issue is misalignment. So for misalignment what I've done is I've got two slightly bigger bearings here and the misalignment can be parallel or angular. So if we talk about parallel misalignment first of all, parallel misalignment is when the two bearings are actually square with each other but one is um, sort of misaligned but the bearings remain parallel. The other type of misalignment is angular misalignment where the bearings, the centre lines might be the same but one is angled like that so that's obviously exaggerated. So now we come on to the juicy bit which is which bottom brackets creak. For this, what I've done is I've put the data in what are known as box and whisker plots. So let's have a look at the data. If you're not familiar with how a box and whisker plot uh, works, let me explain. So if we take um, Boardman as an example, so I've got all the bike frames here. Uh, I measured all the holes and normalised them, so that's the first thing I did. Um, because they're all different sizes, so you've got some that are BB30, some that are PF46. Uh, some that are, in the case of some look bikes, of 65mm bearings. So a box plot, box and whisker plot, this bottom whisker is the smallest hole that I measured. This top whisker is the biggest hole that I measured. 25% of the holes were between this top whisker and the edge of this box. Another 25% were between the edge of this box and this line here, which is the median point and 25% in this big box here and the final 25% was in here. So it is a measure of accuracy. The smaller the box, the smaller the whiskers, the more accurate the hole. Um, the results kind of speak for themselves. If you take Boardman and Cannondale, they're not particularly accurate and then as you go further right they become more accurate. So Specialised is becoming um, you know, fairly, fairly good there. You've got a few outliers. Um, look, very, very good accuracy there. So obviously the target here is between 41.96 and 41.98. Uh, so the time, uh, look, and uh, Hong Fu, Deng Fu, not bad, but not ideal. And then what I've done is, for illustrative purposes, to show you how accurate you could get, I put an NTN bearing on the, uh, on the slide here. So an NTN bearing has a variation of three tenths of sweet FA. And also a Chinese bearing, which was labelled NTN, but it was a fake. Um, so I took some of them. So I've taken 12 of all of these and plotted them, minimum 12. Um, a Chinese bearing, you can see the variation in that. So one of the problems you could get is if you got a Chinese bearing that was on the, the bottom end of the tolerance, i.e. down here, and you got a bike let's say a Cannondale or a, um, a Boardman and put the bearing in the hole you'd find it fell out because you've got a tolerance mismatch. If you took this NTN bearing and put it in this frame, this in the, sorry, the Cervelo, the Specialized, the Time, uh, the Look uh, or the Hong Fu Deng Fu, you would find it would fit. The amount of crush that you get there would vary but it would fit and it would retain. So that is a measure of the holes. The next criteria was the angular misalignment. So angular misalignment is uh, where you've got two bearings, so let me show you that. So you've got two bearings and then angular misalignment is like that. So you've got a big angle on there so that's exaggerated. Ideally you want this to be less than 0.1 degrees um, most of these bikes are worse than that. So Boardman, 
Cannondale is garbage, Cervelo is not much better, Specialized is getting better, and then down here, you know, the usual players, Luck, Time, and then Hongfu, Dengfu, again, very good. Now we move on to Parallel Misalignment. Now Parallel Misalignment is where you've got your two bearings, or two sides of the bottom bracket, and one, they, they remain parallel with each other, but one is offset. Again, this, this chart kind of shows everything um, in great gory detail. So, Boltman, Canada, Cervelo, Specialized, all crap. And it must be something to do with the way they're manufactured. So, uh, either they get two halves of the bearing shells and glue them together, or if they're drilling holes or mandrels or something like that, the manufacturing process is not very good. Look and time are really, really very good. Both of these manufacturers, to be able to get to within that tolerance on carbon is exceptional. A uh, bit of a, um, I guess, a uh, surprise was the Hongfu Dengfu. That uh, was, was fairly accurate, but not where you would want it to be. Final bit in all of this is this last graph where I show what bottom brackets are like in terms of fit and tolerance. So there's a few manufacturers there, Parley, Token, Hope, um, Hambini Standard and Hambini Black Edition. All of these bottom brackets, you can see there's a clear difference and the reason why they have such a large variation is because invariably they are CNC machined. If you CNC machine something then it's very good for repeatability and churning things out really really fast. However, if you want fine tolerances then you have to make them by hand and the advantage to making something by hand is you account for wear in the tool because as you uh, you know grind something away or machine something away the tool wears and a human will take that into account whereas a machine is just dumb and stupid and it just takes the same position every time but if the tool is smaller then that tolerance gets worse so all of these lot are, in, are going to be CNC machined the other thing that is a um, bit of a pain in the backside for um, uh, tolerances is anodizing. So when you anodize something, you can't, can't control the tolerances very well. So what is the conclusion in all of this? Well, of the ones that were on test, the look and the time, and to a certain extent the Hongfu slash Dengfu were, were good, but the look and the time specifically were the best. And the reason I think for that is one is they are very well advanced in carbon technology and it shows in their products and they also own their own factories. They're, to the best of my knowledge, their manufacturing is not subcontracted whereas everyone else on that list, it was subcontracted. The other thing is of the ones that are subcontracted out, uh, I guess uh, an opinion of mine is engineers from the bicycle industry are not familiar with the relaxation of materials. So what that means is if you go and machine, a, a, for example, this bottom bracket to a particular diameter and then test it initially, it will give you a dimension. If you go and test it again after a period of time, let's say three or four days, that dimension will be different. So when they take a frame out of their mold and then check it, it's probably within their stop stop go gauge but if you go and check it again later then it won't be another issue is uh, on bearings so the ntn bearing versus it doesn't necessarily have to be ntn but a branded bearing versus the the fake or the cheap um chinese bearing there is a huge difference and that's probably the cheapest thing to go and change so fsa are renowned for selling uh, bearings that are just generally rebranded crap. If you've got those and they are creaking, I would swap them straight away. That's a th another point. And I guess the overwhelming conclusion is if you're going to buy a bike and you really don't want it to creak, don't buy a Cannondale and don't buy a Boardman. There's going to be a lot of people out there who don't have creaky bikes from those manufacturers, but the chance of you getting a creaky bike from those manufacturers is much higher than the other brands that were on test. I don't believe for one second that engineers at Cannondale or at Boardman would go and sell their bikes with such crap manufacturing tolerances. I think they've been driven 100% by accountants who want to get the bottom line down. 
Unfortunately, that means that they design something probably in Europe or in the States and then go and get it manufactured in the Far East. They have no control over what happens in that sort of process. The upshot of that is when you get your bike frame, you're more likely to get creak. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember to check out my website, hambini.com, and uh, subscribe for more videos. And uh, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you very much, and until next time.